Uh, hi everyone. Uh, for today's class, we'll talk about this, no? basic elements and principles of art. No? Uh, during the week one, no? week one to two, uh, you, fo uh, you focus no, more on the actual introduction to art, right? Introduction to, to art. And then uh, actually the week three to four, including this, uh, uh, including this class, and though uh, you started already, no, uh, in your module, this thing about living with uh, with art, no, living with with art. Uh, but this time we talk about basic elements, no, and principles of art. What is in the art uh, that we appreciate it? Uh, but we have to admit that there are artworks which we don't appreciate also. No, that's why it's it's non objective, no, uh, or subjective. In, in a way you know it depends on the the eyes of the the beholder no so uh remember uh we we you uh, know we we derived the word art from an aryan root word uh ar uh which means um putting together right you remember that in the first lesson and then uh, the other one uh from the latin word you also derive it from uh, the origin of this word art from a latin word uh which is ars no a r s uh, which means a uh, skill or ability no so right now we're talking of basic elements and we will talk about basic elements so in a way we can put these ideas together and we can say that uh, somebody has, is artistic no or can produce artistic work because he or she has the ability or the skill to put all these things together no and these things are the elements no? and the basic elements, but not only the basic elements of art, but also the principles. That's why if you notice, and this is end, it's very important to know the principles of art. So that's our focus class for today's lesson. However, uh, you may remember, uh, I, uh, you also studied about the, the types of art, the major and the minor art. Uh, in the major art, you have this music. No? So we'll also discuss about basic elements of music in particular though when we talk about basic elements and principles of art in general uh, pertaining to all these types of art the major art and uh, the minor arts you know what's uh, under the major art right the dance the literature no? and what's under the minor art right okay so uh, so that's our focus for today okay uh discuss these topics and uh discuss a particular art which is music no Okay, uh, let's dive in. Okay, so the identify, as I mentioned, identify the basic elements of art and uh, enumerate the principles of art. Okay, so let's start with the basic elements. So these are the basic elements. So uh, it's enumerated here. We have subject, medium, line, color, texture, volume, perspective, form, style. We'll discuss each of this class now. We'll discuss each of this and uh, some details, no, but not really uh, full details of this one. Okay, so let's start with the subject. Subject, it's the topic, focus, or image, just like this. You know, when somebody, you know, uh, uh, produce this uh, artwork, you no, know, uh, he or she has subject in mind. No, uh, to us, you know, uh, viewers or uh, someone looking at the art, uh, we might think of another subject. No, okay, that's why it's a. Uh, it's a non-objective or subjective uh, appreciation in a way no, of, of an artwork, okay? So that's one element class. So it's the topic, focus, or image, subject. Medium, okay, so uh, the substance the artist uses to create a piece of work. So for example, uh, if you look at it, so what uh, what medium? So he, has, he or she has the subject, so uh, he or she has to think of the medium, on how he will you know, uh, produce this piece of art, no? Uh, that will also depend on the other elements class. No? Now we're discussing it one by one, but they're all interrelated, interconnected, and also the principles of art. When you talk of a subject, of all these elements, uh, you have to connect all of them. No? Uh, they are all interrelated. No? For now, one by one, no? we do it by one by one. But after the lesson, uh, you must bear in mind that they're all interrelated, they're all connected. No? Okay, so next is, uh, yeah, this one, as I mentioned. So let's discuss some details. So we have this chalk uh, pastels, look like this, and then color pencils, graphite, no? markers, pens, charcoal, crayons, ink, oil pastels, watercolor, pencil. No? In elementary, probably uh, we use no, most of the time crayons, right? In elementary, no? And even watercolor, right? 
Okay. The others probably they have all of this because they really like art, no? The other uh, was uh, your classmates before, no? Or probably you. You have all of this medium, no? And just think of what medium being used here, no? You may think about it, no? Okay. Uh, next uh, element is the line, no? So this one is interesting class, and it's different from the line that we know in mathematics, right? In mathematics, uh, the line there is straight, right? Straight. And then uh, with two arrows, right? But you also have another line there, which is uh, a part of a line, which is a ray with one arrow. And without the arrow, you have the segment. But this one is something different, uh, uh, that your right brain uh, can understand. Uh? Uh, whereas the, the math part, that's the left side of your brain. Uh? So here, class, uh, it's different because it's not anymore straight. You can have curve as a line. Because in mathematics, we know when it's not a line. Uh? It's a curve. So again, it's different. So it's your right brain, which is at work here, class. No? That's why um, we can still appreciate it because of that side of our brain. No? So a line is a point moving in space considered by many to be the most basic element of art, considered a moving dot. No? So this one, so you have the straight, vertical, diagonal, horizontal. This is the common, common, right? But we have the wavy, the scallop, the zigzag, the curly, the dubbed, Okay, this one is like more of a point, right? But here it's considered a line because, in fact, if you look at the line, the, the definition is a point, right? It's a point. But we know that a line in, in mathematics consists of points. Actually, infinite, infinite points. Okay, anyway. Uh, then graduated, no, zigzag, curved, uh, dotted, though we don't see any dots. Dash, uh, chevron, spiral, not the spiral. And then the broken, uh, the thin. Yeah, we have this, right? Uh, the thick, uh, the crisscross. So a line suite is sometimes called its thickness. No? Lines are sometimes called strokes. Yeah, in art usually. That's why there's a mention here. Digital artwork, especially when we're referring to lines in digital artwork. Uh, this day's class, we have a lot of that, right? Digital artwork. Okay, because usually uh, we're used to art like being uh, in a museum, right? Or uh, in a display in our house. No, but we know already that that's not art already because even music is an art, right? So we're not just talking of this kind of art, no? Okay, so, so of course, in music, uh, we don't use this anymore, no? Okay, so anyway, I will tackle more of that later, you know, about that one, the, the, the elements of music. Next is color, no? So a basic element of art that involves light produced when light waves, no? Uh, it's more of uh, science, no? no? Science, no? Uh, why we have different colors, so... Science explains that, right? So anyway, uh, strike an object and are reflected into our eyes. So again, that is science. No? So anyway, um, so these are the, no, no, the, the colors. No? We have the, we learned this in elementary, right? The color wheel. We have the secondary, the primary. If you combine the two, you have tertiary. And these other colors. No? Probably we can just meet this in the like visual arts, not just like this subject. No? Uh, cool colors, monochromatic, warm colors, no? analogous, triadic, and then complementary. No? So next is texture. No? The perceived surface quality of a, wor a work or, or of art. No? The surface quality. So if you'll notice, you see different no? uh, texture here. No? But you're only looking at, but the focus is more on the surface. No? The surface. Okay. But if you notice the same medium, no? I think same medium being used here, right? Same medium. So just think of it, no? Uh, if you use different medium and then you're talking of this different texture, no? What will be the effect? Okay, so what will be the, the, no, the how will you appreciate it, no? But we're just talking of some elements, no? We're not just talking of all the other elements yet. Okay, the next is, we're not talking the volume yet, no? But this one is the volume now. We know that there is a volume, no? There is a volume here, but... We're just discussing it one by one. Okay, how about the volume? The representation of mass in an artwork, a unit of three-dimensional measure of space that comprises a length, a width, and a height. You know that already, right, in mathematics. When we talk of volume, of course, it has a length, a width, and a height. But if it's two-dimensional, uh, just a length and a width, no? Okay, because it's mentioned here that two-dimensional, no? A uh, volume, uh, three-dimensionality can be simulated in a two-dimensional work, like a drawing, no? Thanks to the use of light and shadows perspective. Because there, uh, you can highlight that the, the space, no? uh, you can highlight that part on the, the three dimension no? because of the shadow. No? 
But you notice again, same medium being used here, no? Just uh, look at what the effect is if you, ano, no? If you, uh, for example, uh, use other medium to this one. Okay, what do you think is the effect? Okay, so uh, because later class, you have to uh, no, consider all these elements uh, no? and ask yourself, what's the effect if the, 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 this element is this and then so on and so forth. No? Since we haven't discussed yet, that's why you can just integrate the, the, the volume, the texture, the color, the line, the medium, no? the subject. But still, there's thing more. Uh, yeah, the perspective. This one is uh, no, no, very important. No? The representation of three-dimensional objects or spaces in two-dimensional artworks. If you will look at it class, it's, it's kind of flat, right? Uh, it's like a two-dimensional, a rectangle. We know that. We learned that in mathematics that a rectangle is a two-dimensional form. But if you really look at it uh, and even consider yourself as part of it, you can feel it's two the three-dimensional, right? The three-dimensional, no? So that's perspective, no? Okay, so I believe you can feel it if you consider yourself to be one of them. You can feel it's three-dimensional. In fact, even if you don't consider, just staring at it, no? Just staring at it. Now, do you notice this one? The This one, no? You notice it's three-dimensional. You can feel the three-dimension, right? But if you only look at the surface, yeah, it's two-dimensional, no? It's a rectangle. So it depends on your perspective, no? Okay, anyway, uh, next is form. Uh, this remember it's like uh, also a volume right because um all those elements are at work now when you look at an art all these elements no also the medium no also at work here okay anyway what is a form something that is three-dimensional again like the volume and encloses volume okay mentioned here having length width and height a form always has three dimensions length width and height now when you stand next to an object you can go around it and see the three dimensions no but the focus here class because when you talk of volume the space right the space. Remember, you learned that in you know, mathematics. It's the amount of space. You know, that's the volume. No, the form is more like a shape. No, in, of a three-dimensional because uh, well, it's a two-dimensional. It has a shape also, rectangular, right? Something like that. No, this one. Um, uh, it's three-dimensional, but uh, you know, the focus is more on the form, no, not the space. When you talk of form. Okay, class. But again, uh, they work. Those elements are interrelated, class, right? You cannot isolate one from the other. No, even if you just focus on the form, you can also. Th there are other elements involved, right? Okay. So next is style. This one is interesting. Not the style, uh, uh, because because of the style, it may not be boring, right? It doesn't look boring. Okay. Uh, but there is art like. The, the intention is uh, to do, uh, to make it like boring. It looks boring because sometimes if it's simple, uh, to us it's boring, right? But later you'll know that it's one of the style also, one of the styles uh, to uh, to have your art as simple. No, uh, as you actually call it minimalist. No, later you show an example of that. This one to me is not uh, simple. No. So anyway, uh, so what is style? The manner in which the artist portrays his or her subject matter on how the artist expresses his or her, her vision. This vision has to do with the principles of art. Now, later we'll talk about that. No? The principles. That's why uh, in an artwork class, you cannot isolate uh, the, the elements from the principles. Very important. No? Uh, if your purpose is just to draw, possible uh, without the principles. No? But it's not uh, no, effective. Probably, uh, yeah. It won't be even noticed, right? Or appreciated. You just drew it, no? Without considering these elements as well as these principles of art. Uh, anyway, uh, if you're a professional, yeah, you consider all of this, no? Uh, because that's your career, the, the elements and uh, the principles, no? But even if you're not a professional, you're just a student, no? Possible also because, because you like it. Right, you like it, so you study more on it, and then you learn about the style and then this principle. Sometimes you, sometimes you'll be surprised because probably that's your skill, not that's your talent, not in art. And even if you don't know this, but you, uh, you can produce a work already, no? That's called talent, no? And then all the, the styles and the principles are there. That's possible to happen, no? Uh, so anyway, but I believe there's what you call develop also skill, develop skill, okay. Uh, and then, and with that, yeah, you're able to come up with this, uh, these elements and the uh, principles. No? 
but there are those innate no as in really talent no even if you don't know these elements and or these principles but it's it's in your art in in your artwork no that's possible meaning that's skill that's a talent no so anyway um determined by the characteristics that describe the artwork such as the way the artist employs form color so now you know this uh, uh there's a mention of other elements no but the composition we'll talk more about this no but actually uh it's uh, it's related to what i mentioned a while ago regarding the 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 origin of the word art no the putting together and then the skill uh, ability and then i connect it to the elements and its composition is more of the yeah putting together all these elements no uh together no uh with these principles of art no okay at work as well no uh, to be able to produce an artist's artistic uh, work or a work of art okay so now uh that's why it says here to name just a few okay class so let's talk more about this style no different styles no because this is really interesting no so we've finished all discussing all the elements but let's focus now on one of these elements which is the style so let's talk about popular art styles so one is photorealism the other is abstract now appreciate class the art here no uh, photorealism is an extremely realistic form of painting no, or drawing in which the artwork is based on a photograph. Okay, this one class is abstract. Abstract art is a non-objective, non-representation art, non-representational art that does not seek to replicate objects from real life. No, unlike this one class, you can I know relate it to real life because yeah, you eat candies, you know marbles, but art is incorporated. But this one class you cannot you cannot right it's abstract um you cannot connect it to a uh, like concrete that's why it's abstract no? the opposite of concrete is abstract but still class now you can feel it no uh there's like you can appreciate it now when you look at it uh there's the sense of uh, connection also no uh, that appeals to your emotion no uh, when you look at it no um that's why i like this no i like art so anyway next is whimsical no Whimsical art is fun, light-hearted art artwork that stems from the imagination. So you can really see this, I don't know, the, the imagination of that artist, no, in producing this art, and also the light-hearted, no. When I look at it, I feel, I know, I feel like uh, relaxed, no. When I look at it and whimsical, so I feel like there's some music because it sounds like a musical, right? Uh, well, looking at it, I feel like there's some music, no okay so it, it it's for me no i don't know with you as i mentioned it can be subjective no it depends on the beholders of the eye okay now we have a composite no a composite art combines any of the above styles in a creative and funky way okay so do you have something here no okay class so just appreciate it so next is still life okay that of beauties that talks about death but there's something like life here and also this one actually this one class when i google it this one uh, it's being uh, no, uh it's for selling no at 800 dollars no uh, if you compute that in pesos probably like 40000 pesos no but you you you'll be surprised with the other art no the especially the digital art class no uh there it's even being traded also no but it's not we're not talking of 40000 pesos or 800 dollars we're talking of like million dollars no uh probably next time if we have a chance i'll show you some collect uh some uh, no, no, some digital art class no uh and some of them are really simple and yet there is like a value a monetary value no so this time we're not just talking of appreciating the art no also thinking about earning from it no <laughs> so i don't know if you're aware of the nft the non-fungible token you, uh, we associate it to those digital arts classes eh? because it works on the platform of this new technology which we call the blockchain technology you know if you're my student in uh, stem science uh, science technology and society i discuss about that uh, that uh, black uh, though not really in detail i just mentioned it uh, the blockchain technology so uh somehow um uh the, the art is connected not to that no uh on that on that uh platform even this uh no, facebook the facebook right um uh, they changed their name to meta no, because metaverse and that one also works on that technology emerging technology it's a new technology blockchain technology but other industries companies are already starting to adapt it because it really be, be the the trend no, not just a trend it's really be the the it will be useful no it will be useful no 
So, uh, for example, in Facebook, there's what you call, uh, because the goal of the Facebook is to have like that metaverse, avatars, no? Somehow avatars is like form of art also, no? Form of art. They're not really real people, but it's a form of art, no? Anyway, if we have a chance, we can talk about that. But for now, let's just focus on this. Now, if I look at this class, look at this. Uh, red and snow, but I can only relate this note to the white, no? But you know this, right? I eat this. I, I buy this, no? And I really see the it's like this, no? Uh, there's like a cover for the apple, and then the apple is called red, so red and snow. But it's up to you how you relate it, no? And to still life, okay? So how do you relate that, no? Okay, so next is, yeah, this is what I'm talking about, no? Simple and yet still powerful, no? Okay, minimalist. Usually it's that uh, type of art, no? We're in, uh, the idea is simplicity, no? Okay. So next is nature. This one is very obvious, you know, the nature. You know? uh, it's just that this one is colorful. This one is just green. But very obvious, it talks about nature. You know? In fact, uh, you'll be curious, is it, is it really this is the color of the wilderness in Colorado? Okay, uh, because uh, usually if it's a trunk, it's not, not, not orange, right? Okay, anyway, it's just for the art, for the sake of art. Okay, so there. So those are the styles class. You know? And this one, this one we uh I can relate not because or you can relate because of mathematics right geomet geometric right uh this one I uh, yeah I can say biosphere because when you say biosphere you it relate you relate it to Earth no but this is my question here no because it mentioned here clock so probably this is the one inside the machine the clock right not the the not the no no because I can I can see numbers here probably this one has to do with the the machine the the one inside the clock no. That runs the clock, the, the one responsible for the, the functioning of the clock, no? Probably, no? Uh, these are like the, you know, parts of the machine, okay? So it really uh, depends, no? But, you know, the real, you know, uh, the, uh, depends on the artist, no? Uh, for sure, when he came up with these styles or this artistic work, uh, remember the subject, uh, he, he or she has the subject in mind already. Uh, and then also these principles, which we'll talk later, no? to come up with this artwork. So especially if they're professionals, you know, they can't just produce this out of one. No? Uh, they have to, remember it's a skill class, no? it's a skill, it's an ability to put all these things together, uh, these elements, and also um, uh, considering these other uh, principles of art and you know, to come up with an artwork no but we have to admit there are artwork we don't appreciate right there's still artwork we don't, we don't appreciate okay so it depends on that the principle of that person who who who, uh, who produced that uh, artwork okay uh the, this one is abstract another style abstract so but you can put a concrete meaning to it for example uh spherical revelation so yes i can relate it to the sphere and revelation probably is it has to do with the uh, no, re a revelation in the Bible. Okay, you may think about that now. Or probably you don't put any meaning, you just appreciate it now. But of course, the message is different, class, right? Uh, when you look at this picture, it's like kind of uh, last days, <laughs> last days, no? Uh, it's the end of the world, okay, something like that. Okay, but uh, still, the original uh, subject, the original meaning will come from the, uh, no, from the one who produced this artwork. Okay, but again, uh, it doesn't mean that you're, you're, uh, no, uh, the meaning that you're giving to it is wrong. As I mentioned, it's not objective, it's subjective. So if it's subjective, uh, it's not wrong. That's your, that's, your, uh, no, that's your understanding of this art. Uh, this one is really abstract. No? Sometimes we can think of the abstract as, and I can also do this, something like that, right? Sometimes you feel like that, eh? Or we feel like that. Now, I, this one, see, uh, yeah, I can't really. Probably you, you can, no, no, you can see the meaning here, or probably there's no meaning really. No, it's just appreciated. Not just appreciated, but there's a title. No, so you might be curious why C of all. No, why C, no, and why breath? But we know there's a meaning of breath and C. No, okay, so it's up to you how you will, no, no. Uh, how will you how will you put meaning to this one or sometimes you just appreciate it you know, without putting a meaning no or just hate it no that's not sometimes like that no uh it really depends on you no so next is we can talk of this particular art the major art which is music no okay let's now be more specific 
of this of this art. But you notice there's some similarities with the elements of art, no? Because still, this is still art. But we don't see the rhythm, no? the dynamics there, no? But in music, we have. Because when we talk of melody, rhythm, harmony, we talk of sound, right? Sound. Uh, we know that uh, the other types of art do not have that, that element of sound, no? But this one, you notice we have this in the elements of art. Okay, we'll discuss each of this, but not really in detail, no? Okay, let's discuss about rhythm. So the pattern of sound, silence, and emphasis in a song. In music theory, rhythm refers to the recurrence of notes and rest. So when you talk of rest, that's silence, right? Uh, in music. Uh, as the word implies rest, so uh, it's tantamount to silence no? in time. No? But if you will look at the his class, we only have the notes. We don't have the rest, the rest notes. No? Actually, if you put it really in, in, uh, in uh, music, uh, the rest is really silence, no? Okay, but this one will produce sound, not the notes. But the silence is important. The rest is important in music because you notice uh, when you listen to a music, there's a part of silence also, okay? So rhythm, uh, for this rhythm um, to be at work in music, uh, we have this, I don't know, we consider this, no? A rhythm, the arrangement of sh short and long notes in a piece of music. The short and the long notes, no? And then the phrasing, the shorter sections that combine to make up the, the music as a whole. So the beat, the underlying pulse in the music, the length of notes, how long or short a note uh, sound, as we mentioned here, long and short. And then stress or emphasis on a note, the accent, no? the tempo, the speed or space of the music, ostinato, repeated musical pattern. And then the time signature, this one, it has to do with this one. All of this class is important ano, to come up with a rhythm of music because music has rhythm. It can be sometimes it, it sounds nice to you, sometimes it's not, because it has to do with the combination of this, no, of these elements here. Okay, class. So to proceed, uh, because some in music class, uh, we just hear it, no, because uh, sometimes uh, we can appreciate without knowing all these elements, right? But the response, uh, there is what these are the elements responsible for the the outcome or your impression of the music, no. Uh, it may sound good to you because of this combination. You know? Right now, we're talking it one by one, but in reality, they, they, they are interrelated and they work one another you know? to come up with this music that you're hearing. You know? Whether you appreciate it, it or you don't appreciate it, uh, it's a result of this you know, of these elements. Right now, we're discussing it one by one, but after this lesson, uh, be sure that this, uh, you realize that these are all interrelated, interconnected. In fact, uh, you can appreciate or hate music without knowing all these elements, but they are responsible for your reaction, uh, these elements, no? Okay, uh, so it's more of understanding, you know, your appreciation of music or why you hate that music. It's more of understanding. That's why we're doing this, no? We're studying it one by one, but not really in detail, no? If you want to know more about this in detail, yeah, you can search about it, no? Okay, or you can take a course related to music, right? So anyway... Melody, the state, uh, static product of a given succession of pitches in musical time. So you hear the word pitch, no? So it's connected to melody. But that pitch, uh, what's, uh, what are the elements responsible for the pitch? This, this one, which are connected to melody, no? The ornamentation, the phrasing, the articulation, the register, the range, the motion, the contour, and instrumentation. The details, I'll leave that part to you if you want to, if you are curious. And then the dynamics, no? Uh, yeah, it has to do with the, uh, the, the loudness of the sound. No? How quietly or loudly a piece of music should be played because sometimes when you listen to a music, uh, it sounds noisy to you. No? This can be responsible to it. But again, uh, other elements are related. That's why that's your impression to that music. No? Dynamics, but this can be one of the major reasons. No? Dynamics are an important way of conveying the mood of a piece and your use of dynamics is a marked element of your performance. So, uh, all these are also uh, working on the dynamics and music, no? the loud, uh, forte, the mezzo forte, the mezzo piano, okay? Uh, yeah, but uh, for example, that music can be uh, soft, right? And then it's related to this piano, or that dynamics is called mezzo piano, or the dynamics of this music is loud, or this one is very loud, okay? So, and so on and so forth. Okay, so it's like describing the dynamics of the music. Now you can use this adject, uh, this, uh, no, this, uh, this words, not to describe the dynamics of the music. 
Okay, class. So next is harmony. Very important also, right? Uh, otherwise, probably this one also responsible. So that's why you appreciate the music, no? Uh, harmonious. The sound of two or more notes heard simultaneously, no? I like this, like 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 this one, class. No, you have three notes, but you notice on the same, no? no? Meaning, uh, harmony is included there, no? so that it will be pleasant to your ear, no? The sound of two or more notes heard simultaneously, but even though uh, uh when you hear it like you see different notes but sounds pleasant because of this element harmony okay if there's something wrong with the harmony then it will not sound pleasant to your ear probably no okay so next is texture how layers of sound within a piece of music interact okay texture so i still with the sound connected to the sound so this is these are at work when you talk of texture, the density, the diagram, the phony, and the instruments. No? I leave the details to you, class. No? So next is the form. The so we're still talking of the ano, class, uh, elements of music. No? The structure of a musical composition. So it can be this, monotonic, binary, ternary, rondo. So you will look at this, you have like four. Four, but the same, right? A piece of music based on a single mel melodic idea. No? And then a piece of music with two main sections. Two, that's why binary, no? A, B, or A, 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 B, B, B no? Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with this, the, the A, the B. Uh, okay, anyway. A ternary, a piece of music with three sections. Uh, the, the third is a return to the first. So A, B, A. Ternary, but you know it is still uh, two, no? But it has to do with this. No? Anyway, Rondo, a piece of music with a return to the first section with a different section in between. Okay, class, so uh, we don't have to uh, no, no, discuss this in detail. Uh, just know that a music has form, just like in, because it's an art, no? Uh, this one is not the sound anymore, no? Because we also talk of form in the elements of art in general, no? So anyway, but this is responsible to the production of the sound, no? The form. Okay, next is the color. So often referred to as a, uh, you'll be surprised, class. I know you have a color, uh, a color of music, no? Um, because uh, when you say color, it's more of visual, right? But yeah, it's mentioned here because it's referred to more on the timber. It's a decreased variation present in complex sound waves that contain multiple frequencies, no? Like the sound created by a musical instrument, no? Because the sound has frequency, right? And sometimes we associate frequency to color. Because color also has frequency, no? the color. Okay, class, so voices and instruments can evoke a great variety of types of sounds from airy and light to dry and percussive and from delicate to overwhelming. Tone color is a musical term, musical term for these distinct and unique sounds. No? Uh, so not really the, the visual, no? referring to the visual. Still on the audio. Okay, class, um, next is the style. So again, we have style in, uh, in general for the art. So this, I think, self-explanatory because you know that you hear different styles of music, the rock, no? the jazz, or the ballad. No? Can refer to historical periods. No? Depends on the historical period. Composers, performers, sonic, uh, sonic texture, emotion, and genre. But of course, we, uh, we know examples of this even these days, right? We can hear uh, different styles of music during these days. OK, uh, but the, men the historical period, uh, the time when it was popular, no? when it was popular. Okay, so next is, uh, yes, what makes any form of art great? So what's in the art that makes it great? No? But of course, we know there's art that's not great. So we're talking here of great art only. What, what's in there? Okay, so because of this sincerity, no? uh, sincerity satisfies the questions on whether the artist's intention, again, intention, vision, is perfectly honest or of they are striving for effect either by sentimentality or sensation. Okay, so this is very also important other than the elements, no? this sincerity. Subjects of art, like in the case of a spolarium, are fraught with frustration and sentimentality because that is the goal of the no? of that artist no? uh, to, to convey this message of no? frustration and sentimentality. No? So, and you as, a, as a, someone looking at it, appreciating it, uh, you can feel the sincerity of the artist. No? So next is universality. It's the quality of artwork that should answer the elements of art in the artwork, which is something permanent. That's why universal, right? <laughs> permanent, no? not just of momentary value. We can see that in this art, no? Our Lady of Peace of Edsa. So we all know that. In, uh, speaking of that, right? 
Uh, February 25th is approaching the People Powers Anniversary, no? Uh, February 25, okay? Uh, like in the case of the sculpture of Our Lady of Peace of Ed, of Ed Suspects of Man's Universal Belief in Power of Prayer in Fighting for a Cause. Now, again, we can feel that. Now, when we see this piece, uh, this artwork, we can feel that universality of message, no? Prayer in Fighting for a Cause. So magnitude is a criterion that tells about the scope and significance of a, art, of a work of art. A primary example is the Michelangelo Sistine Chapel, wherein one cannot exhaust the depth and extent of its meaning. Okay, so... It has, it's related to the meaning, not the scope and significance of uh, related to magnitude. Next is craftsmanship is perceived from the point of view of a master or a group of artists who represents a style that reflects period and form of elements and technical skills. So that's a thing self explanatory uh, craftsmanship. Okay, so next is now we can talk of principles of art. A while ago, we just talked of those uh, like what makes an art great, no? Those four, okay? Now, let's talk about this. No? This is what I mentioned to you that you cannot just think of basic elements or elements of art uh, to come up with, a, I think, even that great art of work and a great uh, work of art, uh, you have these principles, no? Okay? Uh, we have this five proportion, unity or harmony, balance, rhythm, emphasis. You notice uh, I we see this in uh, no, music, no? But we don't see this in the basic elements, no? But the, the music, we have this harmony and rhythm, okay? It's because it's in the principles of art, no? not as elements, no? But in music, these are elements, no? And these other principles. So we'll discuss one by one, but not really in detail. So let's start with proportion. Uh, yeah, I mentioned about composition. So composition is like the one I talk about regarding the, the, the origin of the word art, right? So, which is the putting together of all these elements, no, or even these principles that we will discuss now, no, uh, the ability or the skill, no, of that artist uh, to put all these elements, elements of art together, as well as these principles that we will talk about now, no, uh, to produce uh, this great, uh, no, this work of art. It may be great or not great. No, if you want it to be great, then you follow those four, no, that those sincerity universality and the, and others no okay class so uh composition is a process no it's the act of composing or organizing the elements of art as i mentioned artistic composition takes place according to aesthetic principles no that's why this uh, together you have to put this together you know not just elements but also the principles such as proportion and scale unity balance and rhythm now let's talk about proportion the comparative relationship of the parts of our composition to each other and to the whole i think that's self-explanatory no uh it reminds me of mathematics again this proportion thing okay class so next is actually still proportion so when you talk of proportion it can relate to scale no if you look at this picture how come this is bigger than the people no uh then it depends on the artist uh, uh, probably on the what the message that he wants to tell the the the, no, no, the the viewer or the audience regarding his art or her art so scale is the relative size of an object compared with others of its kind its setting or human dimensions no so here this one is not the realistic no realistic um uh piece of art okay so next is Unity, harmony, no, that's another um, principle. The oneness or wholeness, a work of art achieves unity when its parts are necessary to the composition. So indispensable, no? Uh, despite differences, no? Uh, because we can talk of unity in differences or variety class, no? So various parts of a design must give an appearance of belonging together, no? So this one talks about what I mentioned, variety, unity and variety or, or and organic uni unity. Each element in a work of art is necessary to its value. Dispensable class. Now you don't just think of that part in a, in, a, in the art or element without considering uh, the necessity not to its value. Now we talk of value, you know, the value of the art. It must be unified and must hang together as one entity. So you, you should be able to feel the wholeness there, no? That's why unity, no? When you look at that art, okay? So next is, yeah, also, it still talks about uh, unity, no? Uh, the repetition of angles, no? Uh, the curves and the shapes. Each element in the work of art is necessary to its value. You notice the repetition of value, no? It must be unified and is hung together as one entity, okay? 
So next is the balance. No? Balance of an art is present when its visual or actual weights or masses are distributed in such a way that they achieve harmony. No? Now we talk about the harmony. No? Uh, balance gives a feeling of stability and, and rest. Now if you will look at this, balance in position, but not really perfectly balanced because we can talk of informal balance. No? But still balance, but informal, also called occult balance. So this one, yeah, informal balance, but still, if you look at it, in, it's still balance, right? More difficult to achieve than formal balance. However, the results are more interesting. No? Achieve when objects of an equal weight or an equal attractions are placed at object with a stronger attraction is placed near the center. You notice this is near the center. When this, uh, okay, uh, center, when the smaller object or the one with less striking attraction is moved farther out from the center, but still, scientifically, still balance, right? Uh, if you remember your lesson in uh, in physics, right? Uh, there's a way to balance this uh, based on the distance from the center. No, anyway, so this is an example in art, of course, <laughs> but we can relate other subjects to art, right? Uh, like mathematics, uh, physics, not so science. No? Okay, so next is, uh, there's what, yeah, if there's informal, there's formal. And this is very obvious, not only in position, but also in color, really really balanced no? that's why there's what you call symmetrical balance no symmetrical but this one you cannot say that, that there is symmetrical balance here no because uh the color is different here just in position probably no position okay um achieved by making both sides exactly alike while objects of the same size and shape when arranged on two sides of a center will produce formal balance no yeah this one is a concept in mathematics also right symmetric Okay, uh, next is rhythm, no? Uh, not only in music, no? That we hear the word rhythm. Uh, the regular repetition of sensory impressions. So this one class is general, and no? we're not talking of only sound, rhythm of the sound, okay? The regular, because it's a principle, so it must be general. So the regular repetition of sensory impressions, no? So general, when you say sensory, uh, all senses, no? That, not just the audio or the visual, sensory impressions uses the most effective way of uh creating aesthetic unity in prose so you notice they're men uh, we're mentioning here uh other types of arts no uh prose music dance uh these are like major major arts because literature is a major art the rest are the minor arts right okay so uh we have we apply this principle of rhythm in this arts no Okay, so next is the emphasis. No, uh, if you'll notice without reading it, uh, this is very emphasized. No, uh, this art here, no, because of the hood and the color. So it means giving proper importance to the parts or to the whole. Uh, here you want this part only, but you notice this is a whole. Okay, but emphasis is the most noticeable in the art of writing. Indeed, I was, uh, no, no, uh, I see this uh, immediately. No, and I believe in your case, you, 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 this is obvious to you. No. Okay, uh, you can use color to emphasize. Now, color is also used to create emphasis. Contrast of colors can be used to produce a center of interest. For this one class, to me, this is emphasize the yellow. No, to me, no, I don't know with you, because a uh, red. And if you look at the background, it's also red. So this really, you notice the uh, the the not the uh, this picture here a while ago. Uh, this one uh, occupies only less. No, no, in the picture, no, Le uh, less space, but it's more evident because it's emphasized in terms of color no and also this one use a color no it to emphasize this not this fruit okay so contrast of colors can be used to produce a center of interest uh, that's why uh this is like of more interest to me than the others no and also the background no it also uh, no no uh, produces that emphasis here in the background it blends to the red no class okay that ends class uh for today's uh, lesson uh, thank you very much for attending. So bye.